The drug formerly known as LCZ-696 first gained a great deal of attention at ESC 2014. We are now at ACC 2016, and it's probably no surprise we are still learning quite a bit from the largest trial ever conducted in patients with heart failure. The presentation is the efficacy of Secubitril Valsartan relative to a prior decompensation in patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction, and this of course is Paradigm HF. So thank you very much. I am with Dr. Scott Solomon, who is uh, Director of Non-Invasive Cardiology at uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital and a Professor of Medicine at Harvard. Let's start with a quick reminder of the results with what was once known as LCZ-696. Right, it's a little harder to say Secubitril Valsartan, <laughs> but it, it does uh, flow off the tongue if you say it enough times. Uh, we, uh, of course, did the Paradigm HF trial in which we showed that in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, class two to four, we could reduce uh, a combination of cardiovascular death and heart failure hospitalization by 20%. We reduced cardiovascular death by 20%, and we reduced all-cause mortality uh, by 16%. So now at this meeting, what are you presenting? At this meeting, we've uh, presented two very interesting analyses. Uh, one of the questions Rick, we get uh, from many of our colleagues and clinicians is, I have a patient, they have heart failure, but they're doing okay. Uh, they haven't been hospitalized in the past year or so. Um, why should I think about switching uh, their ACE inhibitor or ARB, drugs that I'm very familiar with, to this new therapy. And so we asked that question, what about the most stable patients that we have? Will they benefit as well from being switched in, on, on Secubitril Balsartan? It turns out that in Paradigm, about a third of our patients never had a prior heart failure hospitalization, and many of them had remote uh, prior heart failure hospitalizations. And as you'd expect, the closer you are to a heart failure hospitalization, uh, when we randomize the patients, the more likely they are to have an event. So we use this metric as a measure of stability. And what we found is that there was absolutely no difference in the effectiveness of Secubitril Valsartan compared with Enalapril in the patients who were uh, uh, most stable or the patients who were least stable. In other words, even the patients who uh, had never had a prior heart failure hospitalization benefited uh, uh, at least as much as the overall benefit in the trial. And what's really particularly interesting is this idea that patients may be stable with heart failure is a misnomer in many ways because 20% of these patients had a primary event during the trial and 17% of these patients died during the course of these trials. And these primary events, by the way, about half of them are sudden, uh, are, are, are death or even sudden cardiac death. So you might not get a second chance if you wait for the patient to decompensate before switching them. So that was one of the two papers? You had another Yeah, one? we also looked at the cost effectiveness. Uh, oh. Tom Gaziano yesterday uh, presented the cost effectiveness data um, and uh, what he was able to show was that um, there was a uh, ICER um, uh, with a cost-adjusted quality of life, cost-effectiveness of $45,000, which the uh, World Health Organization and the ACC AHA would consider highly cost-effective. So two pieces of good news from a very large trial. Yes. Now, at ESC 2014, before the drug even had a name, it seemed absurdly early to talk about revolutionizing practice, but that was exactly what the conversation was at the time yeah. by people who had nothing to do with the trial, I might add. Is Secubitril Valsartan living up to that very early hype, do you think? I think there's still some inertia. I mean, we've been very used to ACE inhibitors and ARBs. Uh, we've been practicing with them for many, many years. And this is not a drug that we're adding on to what we're already giving patients. This is a drug that we're uh, replacing one of our um, uh, most comfortable <laughs> therapies that we, we have been used to using for a long time. So uh, there is a certain amount of inertia there, but I think what's happening is doctors are seeing what happens when they put their patients on it because patients do sometimes tell the physicians that they will feel better. Um, when they're paying attention to the data, we reduce hospitalizations. We reduce 30-day hospitalizations after a hospitalization for heart failure, and we know how important that is. Um, and 
physicians, I think, are becoming much more cognizant of um, the totality of the evidence with respect to this drug. So I, it will be a, I think, like any other drug that we've had in cardiovascular medicine, cholesterol-lowering medication, um, uh, beta blockers in heart failure, there's a ramp up, but it is, it is happening. Well, I remember writing that cover story about ESC 2014. Yeah. I remember thinking, you know, we have a drug here that doesn't even have a name. How can anyone be talking about it as a, as a revolutionizing heart failure? And yet, it does appear to be as uh, almost as exciting as it was back then. I think it's it's really lived up to many of the original expectations. Well, it's exciting, and I think that uh, as we continue to um, look at the data, there are more trials that are going on with this as well. Um, and so we will eventually have a much broader uh, amount of data for which to inform us. And uh, for our coverage from this meeting, please make sure you check out CardioSource World News and CardioSource World News Interventions, where I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.